Lovely. Um, okay, welcome everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us this morning for our second webinar of three um, on the topic of supporting parent and carer wellbeing and practice through values guided action. Okay, so as I said, it's the second webinar of three. So perhaps some of you joined us last week for the first one, um, or perhaps for lots of you, this might be the first time you're joining us. Um, either way, we really hope that you find today helpful um, in some way. Um, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, yeah, my name's Alison Benson, and I'll be helping to deliver this morning's webinar together with my colleague, Duncan Gillard. Um, and yes, we're both educational psychologists and um, with a really um, keen interest in parental well-being. Um, we just invite you to pop any questions that you may have during the course of this um, webinar into the Q&A function at the bottom. Um, so that's if you're watching this live. Um, if you're watching this later on on YouTube, so not live, um, you're welcome to join us next Monday at 8am live. Um, and you're welcome to pop any questions in the Q&A box then if you wish to ask us anything. Okay. Um, so, yes, parental well-being is, as I said, a topic we both really care about um, and the current situation, obviously COVID-19 is throwing up huge challenges for parents and carers um, with regards to kind of parental practice and well-being. Um, so the three brief webinars that we'll be offering, we really hope will sort of equip you with a few um, sort of supportive tools and activities to, to just sort of help out really at this difficult time. Um, and specifically we'll be um, using the ACT model, so that's acceptance and commitment therapy, um, in order to just, um, yeah, share a bit of psychology really, um, and some activities that we invite you to, to take part in. Um, with us. Okay. Um, in this session, we're just going to briefly revisit the ACT model, just as a, a bit of a reminder, Duncan ran through that in more detail last time. Um, Duncan will also run through a brief mindfulness exercise um, with us all. Um, and then we will be introducing the or something that's called an ACT matrix. And this is a, a fantastic um, and very flexible well-being tool um, and today we'll be using that to, to um, give a bit more thought to self-care and, and well-being. Um, so that's today's session. <clears throat> okay so yeah thanks Alison for introducing us there. Um, uh, we introduced this kind of three pillars model or kind of illustration as a way of kind of introducing the ACT model last week. Um, and we probably spent a good sort of eight or nine minutes on it last week, but we'll just um, quickly whistle stop tour through it uh, this morning. So just a kind of couple of minutes on it really. So if you remember, um, these three pillars represent particular psychological skills that we know from 20, 30 years worth of research now are particularly significant for human psychological well-being. So starting on the left, we've got this openness pillar. This kind of pillar is a, is a, is a metaphor for the psychological skill of being willing to be open to the full range of experiences that we human beings go through, uh, including some of the more uncomfortable stuff, kind of worry, anxiety, um, uh, self-doubt, this kind of stuff. From a psychological point of view, this stuff is perfectly normal, we all go through this stuff, we all have this stuff, and the skill around this stuff is to be willing to be open to a little bit of it, because sometimes there's really useful and important messages for us in there about what matters to us. On the middle pillar, we've got this kind of awareness psychological skill, so the practice of kind of consciously making contact with your present moment experience and kind of noticing with mindful awareness what's going on for us. And then over on the right, we've got this active pillar. And if you remember what we mean by that is um, connecting with a sense of value, connecting with the kind of person that we most want to be in the world, or if you want to be more specific for our circumstances, the kind of parent we want to be in the world, but person more generally. And then translating that into a kind of course of action, into small little actions that help us to demonstrate those values in the way that we go about living our life. 
As uh, Alison said, we're going to demonstrate a lot of that through the lens of the ACT matrix in a little bit, but because so much of ACT work is about kind of just connecting with the present moment and just noticing what's showing up for you and proceeding from that place of kind of mindful awareness, we'll start with a little mindful check-in. So just as we did last week, really, um, depending upon where you are, where you're sitting, what you're doing, if you're able to just kind of bring yourself into a nice upright um, position, a posture that supports an attitude of being kind of alert and awake. You can drop your hands down to wherever they feel most comfortable. Mine are just resting on my knees, um, but they can kind of sit wherever. So if you can get the spine into a nice upright position, again, if you're able to given your circumstances and your situation. And then if you're comfortable, just begin to close your eyes, rest your eyelids down over your eyes. As I said last week, if it feels uncomfortable to have your eyes closed for whatever reason, then feel free to open them and fix your gaze at a point close to you, perhaps by your computer, your tablet, whatever you're on, or on the floor close to you, something like that. And just take a few moments to notice how you're feeling as you sit here in this room, in this space, in this moment. Noticing what's the weather pattern like inside. We're not trying to change anything, we're just opening up to what's already here. Perhaps noticing the physical sensations of what you're sitting on, your chair or your sofa or whatever it is that you're postured on. Noticing the body in contact with that. And if the mind wanders at any point, just noticing what it was that you were wondering about, what it was that uh, made your mind drift a little, and in doing so, gently bringing yourself back to this present moment awareness exercise. And narrowing the spotlight of your awareness for a few moments to focus on the breath. Noticing the movement of the breath as it comes in and goes out. Rising and falling of the abdomen and perhaps even the chest a little bit as it comes in and goes out. Maybe noticing the cool sensations as you breathe in on each in breath through the nostrils and the warmer sensation through the nostrils as you breathe out. And then once again, expanding your awareness to take in the whole of your experience around the breath. Noticing with awareness every aspect of your experience, however it is, in this moment, in this place. Perhaps when you're ready then, just beginning to open your eyes, take a deep breath if it's helpful to. Maybe roll the shoulders a little bit also if it's helpful to. <clears throat> okay. So from a position of being kind of present and aware of what's showing up from you, for you, we'll um, move into a little activity um, centered around the ACT matrix. Before we get into this, we just need to do a quick kind of shout out and credit to the developers of the ACT matrix. So this is the, the original ACT matrix book written by Kevin Polk, Benji Schoendorf, Mark Webster and Fabian Olas. So we just want to recognize them as being the people who developed this particular way of working, which has been very, very influential, both um, for clinical and in our case, for kind of non-clinical work out in the community, including schools and with parents as well. Okay, so, uh, what I'm going to do is, is, is I'm going to just unshare my screen just for a second because, uh, bear with me, um, there's something in particular that I need to be able to uh, see. 
um, in order to do this little activity. And unfortunately, brilliantly, perfectly timely, my printer decided to break down this morning. So that's just brilliant. Uh, but we'll be flexible, we'll work with it, and we'll find a way of working through it. And I think this should work, hopefully, just fine. One of the many challenges, I think, of working from home. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I think it's very real for a lot of people at the moment, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It wasn't very comfortable when I realised the printer wasn't working. It's like, oh, no. Uh, but uh, we'll be flexible, we'll lean into it, and we'll work with what we've got. So hopefully you can see this slide, even though I'm not, uh, even though it's not on, um, on a slideshow. Um, uh, so we're going to have a go at working through the ACT matrix uh, conceptually. And just while I do that, Alison, I don't know if you want to check what's coming into the chat function and see if there's anything that we need to address now, or if it's something that we can kind of address more toward the latter end of the uh, webinar. I have a feeling that, that at the moment that's not a question and answer thing. That's um, our host in Southend very helpfully sharing some of the links to the books that you oh, um, mentioned, which is fantastic. Oh, um, thank you very much, lovely hosts. <laughs> okay all right I'll keep going so yeah so 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 there's kind of three bits to this little activity that we're going to have a go at doing this little exercise that we're going to have a go at doing today if you're willing so we're going to introduce or I'll probably lead on introducing the act matrix kind of conceptually and then Alice and I Alison and I are going to do a little personal run through of the act matrix um, to sort of see if we can bring it to life a little bit for you and we're also going to have a go at um, uh, you guys do, doing it for yourselves, if that's okay, just to kind of bring it to life yourselves and personalise it to your own experience. One of the reasons we want to introduce the ACT matrix, as opposed to any other kind of ACT um, tool, because there are so many tools and methods and processes out there that we, that we often use, is because the matrix in particular is incredibly flexible. And when you get fluent with it, which doesn't take very long, it's very easy to use in any situation. It's just really a case of drawing a very, very simplified version of what you see on your screen here, which is a kind of cross represented by a horizontal and vertical axes and you can start populating the different quadrants so hopefully as as we've done you'll find uh, that it's kind of that simple and easy and also useful okay we're going to put a particular focus on self-care for the purposes of our work today just because we know that um uh, for parents in general, you're incredibly busy, usually spinning loads of different plates. Self-care often kind of falls off the radar a little bit. It can be difficult to keep focused on. Um, and our sense from talking to parents over the last three months or so is that the coronavirus pandemic has made that particularly difficult for many of us. So we're going to kind of put our focus on that today, although we, we know that parental practice and parental self-care are not completely um, distinct they, they, they overlap right you know we I know from my own experiences as parents that when I'm parenting in a way that's really consistent with the best version of myself as a parent when I'm parenting in a values consistent way I tend to feel much better about myself I tend to feel much happier with my life my well-being tends to be higher so we know they're not distinct things but for the purposes of our work we're just going to separate them out just a little bit so focus primarily on self-care in our work this morning. Um, and I like to think of the app matrix as kind of like a lens that you can kind of look through at any point in your life, at any point in your day. They're going to help you to focus on kind of what matters most, you know, what you want to be about and how much you're showing that in your actions, but it can also help to bring into focus some of that more tricky stuff that can show up, that can sometimes hook us and get in the way of us expressing what we most want to be about. So when we look through the lens of the ACT matrix, I'm going to kind of stick with this metaphor of a lens. When we look through this lens of the ACT matrix, we have this kind of noticing process in the centre, this kind of awareness, if you like, or noticer process in the centre. And we have kind of two dimensions on two separate axes. On the horizontal axes we have this toward and away dimension and it may not be a surprise to you if you were with us for our first in this series of three webinars last week to know that when we talk about away and toward on the act matrix what we mean is stuff that moves us away from our values and away from what we want to be about away from what matters most to us and stuff on the left side that moves us toward what matters to us, 
toward what we care about and value and want to be about. So that's the first dimension on the uh, horizontal axes. And then on the vertical axes, we have this other dimension, the dimension of internal, what we often call internal and external. So on the top of that axis, we have the world of our, our internal world, if you like, our thoughts, our feelings, and our kind of senses, our ongoing experience of the world inside our skin, if you like. And on the bottom of that vertical uh, dimension, we have, the, we have the outer world, if you like, the world that people can all see and share, if you like. This is the world of our actions and the world of our uh, uh, behaviours. Okay. So, of course, having two, two uh, uh, dimensions rotated on the axes, the two axes in that way, gives rise to four quadrants of our experience. Well, like almost if you're looking at it through a lens to stick with that metaphor, four kind of corners of our experience that we can look to and notice at any one point in our lives, at any point in our day, really. So let's just quickly whip around those four quadrants. So on the top right, we have what we call the internal toward quadrant. So again, this is about what matters to us. This is the quadrant of our values, about the qualities that we want to show in our actions. That's the internal toward quadrant. It links very much, doesn't it, Duncan, to last week and what we were talking about, kind of what really matters to us. So I think, yeah, yeah. I touched on that a little bit last week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good to make the link there. This is effectively the quadrant where we articulate our values, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Down in the bottom right, we've got what we call the external toward quadrant. So this is the, the realm of kind of values based action, if you like, things that we can do and things that we would be seen to be doing. That if we were living a life and took consistent with our values and bringing the stuff up in the top um, right to kind of life, we would be doing in our actions. Down in the, in, if we move over to the left, we've all got this kind of other stuff that's going on as well. And that's the, uh, some of the stuff that can kind of hook us and move us away from what really matters to us. So in the top left, we've got this realm of um, our thoughts and our feelings, but particularly tricky thoughts and feelings, thoughts and feelings that can show up and can kind of move us away from what we care about most. We've all got these, these all show up for us. It's not just certain people that have got these tricky thoughts and feelings. We all have this stuff. Um, it manifests in different ways for different people at different times, but we all have this stuff that can hook us sometimes and, and sometimes move us away from where we wanna go. So yeah, so top left, the realm of our thoughts and feelings, um, and thoughts and feelings particularly that can show up and uh, get in the way and hook us a little bit. And down the bottom left is kind of the what we would be doing, the actions that we would be taking, the behaviours we'd be doing, if our behaviour was under the control of or under the influence of some of these unhelpful thoughts and feelings. Okay, so we're going to do a little, uh, uh, as, as I kind of said before, a little conversation now, Alison and I, as a way of kind of bringing some of this stuff to life. And we've actually already kind of pre-populated some of these quadrants already, Alison, haven't we, with some of your own personal experiences. But maybe we can kind of talk to those a little bit now as we go through. I think it kind of helps illustrate it a little bit because I know the first time I heard about the this matrix, I was thinking like I don't I don't get it. It just all sounds a bit sort of complicated, and I don't know how this is going to be useful to me. But um, certainly when I've actually run through it um, with Duncan and some other colleagues as well before, um, it, it it's amazingly powerful. And I, I think yeah, hopefully we can help bring that to light um, to life. Sorry today, yeah. um, and invite you to kind of have a go as well um, if you, if you fancy and if you've got a pen and paper handy. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so before we get started, what we'd like you to do, if that's okay, is just grab a pen and a piece of paper and draw out your own matrix quadrants. So you don't need to do it in as much detail as this one. All we, all we need, all we'd like you to do is just kind of what Alison's demonstrating on the screen there, if you can see it, which is um, draw a kind of cross, so a vertical and a horizontal line um, on a sheet of paper. 
Um, and actually, you don't necessarily need to write all of the um, questions in the four different quadrants. If you just write away on the uh, left side of the horizontal axis and toward on the right side, uh, and then on the uh, the other axes, the vertical, uh, yeah, the vertical axes, just right at the top, inner thoughts and feelings, and uh, the bottom, kind of outer actions or behaviours, that kind of thing. You end up with just yeah, four squares, um, like you sort of see on the screen there, but just a bit more simple for you guys to draw right now. <laughs> yeah. Now, we don't, you don't need to write the four questions that are articulated fully. And for most of the activity we're going to do in a second, we're going to keep this slide up. For most of it, there's a little bit where we'll have to have a different slide up. But for most of it, we're going to have this slide up so you'll be able to see the questions in full. But what we do suggest, just as a kind of, as a quite a quick kind of a memoir, if you like, is that where question one is up in the top right, where it says what kinds of personal qualities and so on and so forth, if you just write there, personal values and then down in the bottom right if you write valued actions and then up in the top left just write something like tricky thoughts and feelings at the top of that quadrant and then in the bottom left perhaps just write unhelpful actions. So top right personal values at the top of that quadrant and then bottom right valued actions, top left tricky thoughts and feelings, uh, bottom left unhelpful actions. And this is as I say, it's just a quick shorthand for the kinds of questions that we're gonna um, run through in a second. Okay, so we've kind of pre-populated this matrix, but Alison, let's kind of speak to it anyway, because hopefully it'll kind of, it would be really good to hear your experience as it is kind of lived from your own voice, if you like. So, yeah. so thinking about that top right quadrant, which is where we like to start often, you know, what kinds of qualities, what kind of, would you, how would you articulate what you want to be about, the qualities you want to express in your actions as a person during this pandemic? Yeah. Um... So I guess I've, I've had chance to, to give some thought to this already, I guess, but I think what sort of come through really strongly for me is that it's really important to me um, to be really supportive um, to be really compassionate and um, to be kind and to be courageous. And I guess that's kind of um, supportive towards family, towards friends, towards like the local and wider community and also towards my colleagues as well. And um, so those are kind of really important to me. But I know um, myself and I know that in order, I guess, to have capacity to do that um, and to be able to live that kind of life and to be about those kind of values and those kind of qualities, I must focus on self-care. And this is something I kind of keep on coming back to um, in my own life, um, that actually self-care is going to be the thing that really enables me to, to kind of be about those things of being supportive, about being kind, being compassionate. So I guess, yeah, for the purposes of, of today, Duncan, I, I will be talking about self-care I think um yeah self-care into focus okay so we so we've kind of articulated that in our matrix up here as you can see as being supportive showing compassion and being courageous with a particular focus on self-care to enable you to uh, yeah. to kind of do the do do those things it's that whole thing about like not being able to pour from an empty cup <laughs> and like um, yeah. the whole um oxygen mask analogy as well which you often get on on yeah. airplanes um you know you gotta secure your own oxygen mask before helping other people with that i guess that's something i've kind of come to learn um yeah so. Yeah, I love that metaphor. It's a really, really useful one, I think, when we're thinking about the importance of self-care and prioritising it. Yeah. OK, so before we do the other three quadrants of the matrix, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to just shift on to another slide, one that if you joined us last week, you'll be familiar with, which is the um, the uh, list of values. And I'm going to... Oopsie daisy. From current slide, Duncan, at the top. Yeah, from current yeah. slide. Thank you. I'll bring that up as a full screen share for a moment. 
Okay. So when people are just kind of getting familiar with the ACT uh, matrix, we often find it's helpful just to have a list of values in front of you as a kind of prompt. And what we're going to do in a second, as we did last week, Alison and I will kind of go quiet and we'll switch our video, um, our cameras off for a second and give you just perhaps two or three minutes to see if you can articulate in your own terms, in a way that feels meaningful to you, some of the values that you most want to be about in, 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 in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, in the top right quadrant of your kind of sketched out matrix. So just focus on that quadrant for a minute. Now, if this list of values isn't helpful or useful as a prompt for you, then absolutely fine. Just articulate them in whatever way feels right and meaningful for you. We'll put them up there. And um, if they help to kind of cue you into particular values that matter, then by all means, put them up there. We'd suggest probably don't go for more than about three or maximum four values because we just need something to work with for the purposes of our activity today and if you want to articulate them as just individual single words like you know courage self-care patience or something like that then that's absolutely fine but similarly as we kind of did with Alison's if you want to write you know two or three or four little statements um, uh, uh, then that's absolutely fine as well however you want to um, articulate it in the top right quadrant, but just three, maximum four kind of values or brief value statements for this part of the activity. Come back in two minutes, should we do that? Sounds perfect, two minutes, okay. okay. See you shortly. Maybe we'll start to come to um, the top right corner. Perhaps you kind of, yeah, got a few things written in there. And yeah, as with last week, this doesn't have to be who you kind of think that you are at the moment. It doesn't need to sum you up. It just has to be a few things that pop to your mind that about, yeah, who you'd like to be about, what you'd like to be about. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Yeah. So hopefully you've been able to do that part and populate that part of the uh, matrix and what we tend to do at this point is drop down to the bottom right so again we'll kind of illustrate it in a conversation Alison shall we um, as I said we've kind of pre-populated this one a little bit but it's great to hear Alison's kind of voice around her experience so we'll go at it like that so so yeah Alison if, if you were really living the qualities that you've articulated and particularly you've mentioned self-care as wanting to as yeah you want to bring into focus what would that be like what would you be seen to be doing what actions would you be taking 
Yeah, so in terms of kind of actions, I guess you'd sort of see me being in a very regular and healthy routine of kind of, I guess, going to bed at a really decent time, getting up each day at maybe the same times so in like a proper routine, um, kind of exercising as well. Maybe I'd be going for like lots of runs every week and I'd be like super healthy, eating healthily. Um, cause I know that kind of for myself, but I guess for everyone really, um, there's such like a massive, um, link between physical wellbeing and mental health and mental wellbeing. Um, so I know that, yeah, being sort of physically looking after myself is a huge part of self care. Um, I guess I'd also see myself kind of taking time out from chores to do things that I like to do, like maybe listening to music, maybe drawing and um, doing kind of creative activities. That's kind of huge for me in terms of self care. Mm. Um, and also just checking in with the people that really matter to me as well, kind of staying connected. I guess huge um, reliance on technology at the moment to do that. Um, but yeah, you'd kind of see me calling friends that mean a lot to me and really kind of taking the time to listen and engage and being present um with them during those phone conversations not just kind of going through the motions i guess but really kind of connecting um so yeah that, that's probably what you'd you'd see me doing <laughs> if yeah. i was really focusing on self-care um yes yeah thanks and and how we've articulated that down in the bottom um uh right of the matrix just here as you'll see is uh having a regular routine going to um going to bed regularly of course you'd be doing that <laughs> daily I hope anyway um uh having a regular sleep routine I suppose that's meant to mean Definitely, yeah um doing exercise regularly eating uh healthy food yeah. taking time out um from chores and work stuff yeah. and taking time to just kind of be and breathe and notice and connecting with the people that you love the most and okay. does that kind of summarize your experience as you've articulated it there or is there anything that you'd want to put into it does no i think yeah yeah i think that that sums it up really well yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's kind of yeah very much the actions that you see see me doing yeah okay great all right thanks and then let's move up to the top left quadrant shui um thanks for sharing that stuff so so yeah, we all have these, don't we? These tricky internal thoughts and feelings that show up from us for a time, from time to time. It's part of the human condition. Um, but what thoughts and feelings might show up when you reflect on the stuff that you've kind of articulated on the left of the matrix there? Yeah. On the right, rather, of the yeah, matrix yeah. there. What kind of stuff might show up on the left, particularly the top left around thoughts, feelings, uh, mm -hmm. et cetera, that might get in the way of you moving toward the stuff you've articulated over there yeah. on the right? I mean, something I've noticed sort of particularly recently, I guess, and um, sort of, I guess, sort of feelings of guilt of thinking, gosh, I need to be doing so much, being really productive and um, the kind of feelings of guilt around your self-care just, you know, that gets pushed to the bottom of the list, right? There's other more important things that need doing. So I guess sort of feelings of guilt and perhaps feeling that I don't deserve to put myself first or focus on self-care, um, that really gets in the way um, for me of kind of... Um, yeah focusing on self-care I guess that sense that I don't deserve to put myself first I'm um, thinking I just don't have time and um, maybe feeling like I'm really lacking in energy and um, these sorts of thoughts and feelings definitely get in the way um, just thinking I'll, I'll kind of I'll get to that stuff when the other stuff is done <laughs> kind of thinking it um, you know there's other things that will impact on other people um, and have a positive impact on other people that I should put first and then I'll just put myself at the bottom of the list yeah. um yeah maybe thinking having a bit of an unhelpful thought there perhaps that self-care is in some way selfish or um not justified and yeah, yeah all this stuff definitely shows up for me all the time um and there's also kind of wondering i suppose if if exercise healthy eating really makes much of a difference anyway mm. um i know like rationally it does um <laughs> but i think when you're sort of busy and um sort of caught up in the sort of treadmill of everyday life you sort of end up thinking oh that that stuff you know it'd be lovely to do that but um who really has time for that anyway these, yeah. these are the things that show up <laughs> so oh. anyway, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh so much of what you said makes yeah really chimes with my own experience as well and kind of it's helpful to in some ways to hear you say that and to kind of have a sense that um gosh i'm not i'm not alone in this i have these yeah. things too and um i wonder if other people uh listening and um watching uh can connect with that i imagine that many people can 
Yeah. So we've kind of articulated it over in the top left there as a sense of guilt and I don't accept thoughts like I don't deserve it, yeah. um, I don't have time, feeling like I don't have the energy um, and that self-care is a luxury and that it could always take second place and that other people matter more and those kinds yeah. of things. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And you kind of see this playing out, um, yeah, when, when these things kind of hook you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you. And then and I'm going to put us on full screen, actually, just so that everybody can see this hopefully a little bit better. Um, yeah, so down into that final quadrant, then the fourth quadrant, you know, if there was a camera on the wall or a fly on the wall and you could be, um, you could be observed, like what would you be seen to be doing if your behaviour was, and I kind of love this language, kind of like under the influence of yeah. thoughts and feelings as you've articulated them in the top left there? Yeah, I think I would be, um, what I notice myself doing when I'm being kind of, I guess, under the influence of these um, thoughts and feelings in the top left quadrant there, I massively put my kind of time and energy into things that kind of need to get done and things that can be kind of ticked off and that help me feel really productive. Um, so whether that's like house chores or things related to my job or, um, you know, even kind of thinking about connecting with friends as being like, I just need to get back to a load of messages and just like tick mm. those things off. And it's, it's all about productivity and not really about kind of meaningful connection. Um, so I suppose, yeah, being on a bit of a treadmill of tasks without really taking breaks um and I guess then sort of really thinking I'm being productive but actually in reality procrastinating quite a lot and um, that that certainly kind of shows up for me um and then I suppose sadly <laughs> what comes up is that I end up being sort of really kind of reactive and actually quite snappy back to people I guess um you know when I'm not focusing on self-care um I end up being a bit snappy towards those that I, I love um which I guess brings me totally away from the things that matter to me i.e being really supportive being really kind and being really compassionate so yeah you kind of see there the sort of disparity i guess between where you kind of end up if you if you kind of yeah are moving far away from from where you want to be on what matters to you yeah yeah that irritation hijacks our behavior oh, yes <laughs> I love that phrase um yeah Oh, again, so much of it I can kind of relate to in, in my own experience. Thanks for sharing that. We put that down in the bottom right then as um, sort of relentlessly focusing on productivity and not, um, not, not always on the things that kind of really nurture you. Yeah. Um, procrastinating a lot, getting kind of snappy, irritation, hijacking behavior, those kinds of things. Yeah. Does that kind of capture it for you? Or? Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, that's bottom left and the fourth bit. And so, yes, that's left yeah very much captures captures it well i think yeah 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 so this right. is very kind of personal to me i guess but maybe there's elements in there that resonate with others as well and duncan it's reassuring to hear that <laughs> it resonates with you um yeah i'm not on my own here with these thoughts and feelings yeah okay great thank you okay so so we're gonna we're gonna stop stop our video there and kind of go uh, on silent for probably about four or five minutes or so and invite you guys to have a go at filling out those other three quadrants now so we kind of recommend probably for the first time have a go at doing it in the way that we've done it so move from you've done the top uh, right so move down to the uh, bottom right um, have a go at articulating some values based actions um if you're up for it around self-care in particular but again it doesn't have to be so obviously linked to that always as long as it connects with what you've articulated up in the top right in that first quadrant and then over and up to the top uh left and see if you can kind of articulate a few thoughts and feelings that might hijack your um actions and kind of get in the way and then finally down to the bottom left with a focus on the kinds of things you'd be doing or seem to be doing if you're actions and your behavior were kind of influent under the influence of that stuff in the uh, top left. So we'll see you in about four or five minutes.
Okay. So hopefully everybody's had a, a chance to have a go at um, writing some stuff into each of the quadrants on the matrix. Um, and we hope that's been uh, a useful process for you. We're going to focus on the matrix quite a lot for the next session as well, and hopefully demonstrate the flexibility of its kind of application, really. Yeah, um, yeah. I've definitely found that really helpful, kind of reflecting on self-care. But yeah, like you said, Duncan, I can see it being really helpful in other areas as well. Um, super flexible tool. <laughs> that's great. Um, OK, so just to kind of round off then before we go to questions and answers if anyone does have any other questions um do pop them in the q a box at the bottom of zoom if you're watching this live um but i guess just to kind of round off um we will have our third and final um webinar next monday at the same time so 8 a.m um where we will be using this matrix to focus on not parental well-being next week but parental practice although as duncan said obviously the two overlap hugely um so yeah thanks so much for joining us um and yeah we will look forward to doing the final webinar next monday um duncan, should i just read out um questions and we'll have a go at yeah reading those i've noticed we've got um please yeah that'd be great yeah we've got somebody that's asking um they said they really like the simplicity of the matrix um and they're holding in mind um the resiliency wheel as a supportive tool um they're now wondering whether they are oversimplifying it um so i don't know what your take on that is duncan yeah, I'm, I'm not that familiar with the resiliency wheel, but um, so it's hard for me to kind of draw comparisons. But, um, you know, one of the things we really love about the matrix is, um, as, uh, as you've said, is, is its simplicity. Um, uh, I have a, a colleague who I work with from the voluntary sector in a wonderful charity called 1625 Independent People here in in the West Country who just has a little matrix book. And, and the amazing thing is there's, there's nothing in it. Um, so he just opens it up. It's, it's literally just a notebook. And he opens it up when he's a little bit stuck and he puts a little cross on a sheet and he's kind of, he's kind of familiar enough with how the different quadrants work and how they're supposed to be um, populated. And um, when he's noticing himself getting hooked by uncomfortable internal stuff or tricky internal stuff, open it up, draw a cross, okay what i'm trying to be about here is i don't know let's say patience what would that mean listening actively not interrupting etc cetera, etc cetera. you know and then over to the left stuff what's happening oh, i'm getting irritated i'm getting frustrated i'm feeling impatient um and the, the cool thing is that when you kind of do it that way it's like you just need a notebook or a sheet of paper and a pen um, and a bit of familiarity with the product. And at any one point in time, it can just help to just nudge your behavior in the direction of the kind of person that you're trying to be. So yeah, kind of hard to comment on um, the two in comparison because I don't know about you, Alison, but I'm not that familiar. Yeah. With the... I'm not familiar with it, but yeah, I guess it's kind of about finding the tools that you find helpful. And if, if you, I guess what Duncan and I are sort of saying is that if, if, if you're able to kind of use these tools to move towards the kind of person that you want to be and that it it kind of feels helpful for you then I, I don't think you need to worry about it you oversimplifying it if it feels useful to you I, I'd, I'd say yeah go for it um I hope that helps yeah. um we have a, a great question here from somebody called Rebecca um who asked do you have any advice for people who may be looking at the third box? So that's about um, the feelings and thoughts that might hook you away from um, the person you might want to be. Um, so any advice for people looking at the third box and feeling like these thoughts and feelings are very strong at the moment, pulling them away from their values? That's a fantastic question, Rebecca. And I guess um, you kind of might be referencing the kind of COVID um, situation and the lockdown restrictions and everything. Um, and the huge thoughts and feelings that will be pulling people away at the moment. Um, Duncan, have you got any kind of thoughts on that question? Yeah, it, you know, I, I, there's a few things that show up for me when I listen to that. A, I feel really, you know, I feel very empathetic because, you know, uh, uh, perhaps one of the things we haven't articulated as much as we might usefully have articulated so far in these two sessions is that the new normal for parents is that we are all having days when we feel like we can't cope. You know, 
I, I know a lot of parents, Alison knows a lot of parents. I'm a parent myself. I have days when I really feel like I'm not coping. Um, and I have days that are great. Um, and, and my experience is that that's typical for everybody. So there's something, I think, like normalizing and I don't know, maybe like permission giving yeah. um, to recognize that of course we're not coping. Of course we have days when we're just not on top of it all and it feels all too much. Um, you know, the, the home ed, the childcare, trying to be the best version of ourselves as a parent that we can trying to keep our job going for those parents that are working parents as well to the extent that the situation allows them to um you know this is new territory and we're all blazing trails here there is no well-trodden path for this this is new stuff for all of us we're all struggling so i think that's really for me feels really important to hold in mind and it feels like sometimes that can just take the sting out of some of that stuff in the top right, just to know that we've, we've all got this stuff going on. And, and the other thing is just to hold in mind that, you know, inside of pain is purpose. My, my sort of all time hero, um, psychologically, Steve Hayes says, um, says this a lot, you know, um, uh, inside of all pain is some purpose. So it's finding that meaning inside the pain because we hurt where we care it's another thing steve hay says you hurt where you care so we don't we'd love for this pain to go away but we don't know how to do that without it coming at significant cost so what we suggest is just see if you can find what matters inside this pain if it's intense worry or anxiety or just that overwhelming sense of not coping mm. you know one brick at a time builds a house, but houses don't get built in a day. So just see if you can find something useful inside that pain and turn it into one single action that connects you with the kind of person you're trying to be. And yeah. gradually, one action at a time, one brick at a time, just keep yourself pivoting back toward that stuff that you care about, having found it inside what's uncomfortable for you. Yeah. That makes sense. And also, um, thanks so much, Duncan. That's like, yeah, I really like that. Um answer that you gave it also um rebecca in answer to your question also makes me think about kind of the five ways to well-being as well and that may be being a helpful starting point um for any parents that are feeling actually that you know these thoughts and feelings pulling them away from their values at the moment so it's really strong um thinking about the five ways to well-being is kind of a good place to start maybe um in terms of kind of actions that um might be helpful for self-care at the moment do you want to just say what they are, Alison, just to be yeah, um, well, I think simple actually, well-being behaviours, aren't yeah. they? And there's five of them. Nicole's just popped it in the chat box, actually, which oh, is Oh, thanks, helpful. Nicole. Thank you. Um, it's, it's possible <laughs> to just sort of Google, I uh, will use the link that Nicole's just popped in the chat box. But if you Google five ways to well-being um, on the Mind website, um, they're all there. It's things about kind of noticing, um, being mindful, connecting, um, there's, there's lots there i can't yeah. now think of them off the top of my head but yeah and they are the five things that are most predictive of human psychological well-being and they're really practical and really doable yeah um, so so yeah so worth um worth and we've actually got a, a little poster of them on our kitchen wall just okay. whenever we walk past it i'm like oh yeah yeah keep doing those and i'll be okay you know yeah um, yeah, that's cool um so I I think that that's the end of the questions. We've got a um, person who asked the fantastic first question there has said, thank you for the reassurance. Um, it feels doable. So I think I will use it. So we're really pleased to hear that, yeah, you feel that it's a, it's a kind of a usable and, um, tool that you will hopefully find helpful in some way. Yeah. Um, okay. Even though I kept getting my left and right confused. <laughs> Thanks for being patient. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you all. And for those of you that want to, we hope to see you again next week for the final and third of our uh, three yeah. Uh, webinars. Yeah, thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for joining. Bye-bye.